Shalom, family. This is Brother Daryl, and today we'll be discussing the fire of Yah. Now, this is a very deep subject, and we're going to get into a lot of symbolism. So let's begin by asking ourselves an interesting question. What is fire? I mean, it's not exactly physical. You can't really weigh it or measure it because it's constantly shifting, yet it can completely destroy almost anything that it touches. And the question of fire is an important one because Yah's essential nature is that of a consuming fire, according to the scriptures. So we need to gain an understanding on this concept so that we can learn how we can dwell with Yah, the consuming fire, for all eternity without being consumed ourselves. Let's get into a few key passages to firmly demonstrate this connection between Yah and fire. Now you can read in Exodus chapter 13 and verse 21 that when the Most High was leading the fledgling nation of Israel out of Egypt, he appeared as a column of burning fire by night. When the prophet Daniel saw a vision of the Ancient of Days, he was seated on a throne of fire, along with wheels of burning fire. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair on his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Let's get into another interesting precept from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also Yah sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yah of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The prophet Isaiah saw Yah when he received his mission and his calling. At that time, he beheld the seraphim, the highest class of angels who are charged with guarding the throne of Yah. The word seraphim literally means burning ones because they dwell in the presence of the consuming fire. So they emulate his nature. So having established through a few precepts that Yah exists as a consuming fire, let's move forward and explore how Yah made a way for us to dwell in peace with him and not be destroyed. It's the Torah. The Torah is Yah's pathway for sinful humanity to dwell with him in perfect harmony. Yah, the consuming fire, gave us the gift of his fiery law so that we might conform ourselves to it in order to be more like him, much like the seraphim. So let's go ahead and read in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 to confirm that the Torah is in fact described as a fiery law. And he said, Yah came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went forth a fiery law for them. Obedience to Torah, the fiery law, changes our essential nature. It makes us more like the Most High, so we're not consumed in his presence. Okay, so let's confirm this by grabbing a precept from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 33 verses 14 through 16. The sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth 
the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given to him. His waters shall be sure. Isaiah confirms that those who seek out righteousness will dwell with the Most High and not be consumed. What is righteousness according to the scriptures? Well, let's go back to the book of law and find out. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah our Elohim as he hath commanded us. So we've come full circle. Keeping the commandments contained in the Torah is righteousness, and that righteousness allows us to dwell with the Most High, who is the consuming fire. So let's get into some symbolic and literal examples of mankind dwelling with the devouring fire in perfect harmony. So when Moses first encounters Yah on Mount Sinai, he sees him in a burning bush. Let's read about it in Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of Yah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. This is a very deep passage. Yah is represented, as usual, as a burning fire. The bush that Yah dwells within represents the redeemed among humanity who live according to his law. In other words, the bush is symbolic of the temple of God that is built without human hands, as is referenced in Acts chapter 17 verse 24, as well as in Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 through 17. So let's go ahead and move on to a more literal example of mankind dwelling within the fire and coming out unharmed. The story of the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace is that literal example of men abiding with the consuming fire and not being burned. You can read about this particular story in Daniel chapter 3. Now, their real names were, of course, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, but they are better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our slave masters always rename us in order to separate us from our true heritage. Now, Nebuchadnezzar erected a massive golden statue in the plain of Dura and commanded that everyone bow down and worship it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego flatly refused because they were determined in their hearts to keep to the Torah, and they were thrown into the furnace at the command of Nebuchadnezzar. So let's read about what happened at that point. Daniel chapter 3, verses 23 through 27. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see fire. Four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire 
had passed on them. These three Hebrews dwelt in the midst of the consuming fire and were completely untouched. In fact, it was the Messiah who saved them. Who was the Messiah, though? The Word of God, the Torah. The Messiah is the Torah that became flesh and dwelt among us. And he was represented as fire himself in Daniel chapter 3 because he is one with the Father according to John chapter 10 verse 30. So it makes perfect sense then that he would take the form of fire and dwell with those three boys because he's the one who protected them. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved from the fire. Again, it was their faith in the Torah, which is a manifestation of the Messiah, which allowed them to dwell in that fire and be completely safe. You see, that's the mystery. By adhering to the word of Yah, we become more like him and we can dwell with him, the consuming fire, without being destroyed. Just like the bush that Moses saw. The Holy Spirit is also represented as fire throughout the New Testament. The Messiah came in part to bring an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as confirmed by this passage. Luke chapter 12 verse 49. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. John the Baptist confirmed this during his ministry. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And this baptism by fire was fulfilled after the ascension of the Messiah during the Pentecost, which is also known as the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot in the Hebrew. Let's go there in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It is not a coincidence that this outpouring of the Holy Spirit occurred during Pentecost. This feast day calls into remembrance the time when our ancestors received the Torah, the fiery law, from Yah on top of Mount Sinai. See, family, these things are all symbolically interconnected. And of course, the Holy Spirit is also represented as fire because it is the third manifestation of Yah. You can read about that in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, who is the Messiah, the Torah, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And let's move forward to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of Yah that dwells within the heart of every believer. So much like the tabernacle in the desert, we now house the fiery presence of Yah. We are the temple of the Most High. Our ability to dwell with the consuming fire 
is important because that devouring fire will be covering the whole earth very soon. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 By the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. They are not like the Most High, so they are going to be consumed by his devouring fire. Okay, so let's jump down a few verses. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10, but the day of Yah will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The whole earth is about to be consumed in righteous fire. Who will be exempt from it? The righteous, those who keep faith in the Messiah and abide in Torah, because they have made themselves the habitation of the Most High. They already dwell with the consuming fire. Okay, So we know, according to Zechariah 13 and 8, that two-thirds of Israel will be cut off and will die in their sins. What will happen to that last third, though? Let's read Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. Then I will bring the remaining third into the fire, and I will refine them like silver is refined, and will test them like gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer. I will say, these are my people. And they will say, Yah is my Elohim. So the remnant will be refined in the fire and made pure. The remnant are purified of sin, which is transgression of the law, and they will then be able to dwell in the midst of Yah in his holy land. This time is coming, Israel. Let's humble ourselves and uphold the Torah to the best of our ability, along with the testimony of the Messiah, so that we can become that purified temple of God. All praises to the Most High, and great glory to His only begotten Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, and as always, I appreciate your time, family, and I'll see you next video. Shalom.